Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Awesome Blue. Now, I'm headed out diving right now on the south side of Maui, and it's a little bit wind, well actually it's a lot windy today. And I'm hoping the conditions underneath the water, the visibility is still decent enough that, uh, you know, we can stay in the water for, for a while and get something good. Also, I'm just finishing up a new episode, as you can see here behind me, that is coming out next weekend. So make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and that notification bell if you want to be on top of all the new episodes that are starting to come out. All right, let's get out there and see what we can catch. Live your life within the moment, moment. And don't go wait until the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is when you older, older So let us stand Hi, let's go My first real opportunity today for a great fish, I called in a big eye emperor, a moo. And when I was running out of air, I revealed myself to the moo around the rocks, and it was just a little further away than I would have liked. It's hard to see, but the spear tip actually did graze him a little bit. Close one. This is some sort of nudie branch or flatworm. I don't see these very often, and when I do, I really can't identify them, and, and I don't know if they're poisonous or what. This find right here blew my mind. Today, I found what is called a granulated cowrie shell. These are considered somewhat rare, and if you saw my last episode, I found a similar false nuclear cowrie shell, which is considered very rare. We're on a roll lately, finding these rare and weird looking shells. The waves were picking up and the underwater visibility was decreasing. We decided to swim across the bay and try our luck at an adjacent reef. To make it over there to the next reef, we had to swim 750 feet, which is about 250 yards. That's two and a half football fields. When we got over there, the visibility wasn't much better, but the fishing was. Right away, I saw a yellow spot, an island jack, and I was able to place a good shot on them. I didn't even have time to turn on my GoPro. Yellow spots are always a fan favorite, and I know my friends will be excited to get this one on the table. The decreasing water visibility meant that we'd probably have to head in soon. But what was worse for me is that my mask was fogging up really bad. Here's a taste of what things actually look like through my lenses. Not ideal at all for aiming my spear gun or for keeping an eye out for sharks. I saw some large milkfish, Ava, swim by me right here, but they were a little far off and I didn't have a shot. They were going pretty fast. And then this happened. There are actually two rainbow runners right there and I decided to shoot the larger of the two. I typically spearfish somewhat close to the shoreline and it's super special for me to see a rainbow runner, let alone have a shot at spearing one. And if you're wondering about the tiger shark, 
No, I did not see that shark before I shot the fish. My first moment seeing the tiger was literally right here when the fish swam up towards the shark. It was a total surprise. When the tiger shark shows back up in front of me, you can actually slightly make out the little striped pilot fish that hang out with him. Tigers swim around with quite an entourage sometimes, and in retrospect, I'm fairly certain that the Rainbow Runners were probably following the tiger. I wouldn't say that I look forward to close encounters with tiger sharks, but I know I'm hunting in their territory, so it's gonna happen, and I'm okay with it, and it's so cool to see these predators up close. What I didn't enjoy about the counter was my fog mask, the low water visibility, and how quickly that shark appeared, then disappeared multiple times. I was 500 feet, about 160 yards from the shoreline when I initially shot the fish, and instead of reeling in the fish to my chest, kind of wrestling it, braining it, I decided to swim in back to shore with the fish still at the end of my spear. Just in case, you know, the fish got charged by the tax man on the way to shore, I just didn't want it that close to me. I'm so happy that I made it back with the fish. Other names for a rainbow runner are a rainbow yellowtail, a Spanish jack, or even a Hawaiian salmon. By the way, this is my newest dog. He's a Great Dane and weighs about 140 pounds so far. He's always curious when I bring home fish, and I think he's established that he'll be getting a few tasty meals each time that I do. You'll probably see him passing through my videos now and again. We're gonna be doing a big sushi feast tonight at my friend James's house, so I've decided to up my sushi game a little bit with a blow torch. This thing looks kinda cool, actually. All right, so I need to find how to fuel it up here. As I understand, there's a little port on the bottom that use some butane to just put it in. So let's try that. Oh, got a little, a little leakage there, but let's try it. So what there is too here, there's a safety. So there's a lock on and off. I'm gonna unlock it. And then on the other side, there's the ability to make the flame bigger or smaller, plus or minus. Let's try this out. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Okay, yeah, we definitely are gonna want smaller. Yeah, there, like that's perfect. That'll help us like perfectly sear the sushi. Yeah. Check out the bright reddish pink color there and the marbling in the meat. It looks like Toro actually, which is the best meat on a tuna. Let's pack this up and I'll be out of here over to James's house for sushi.
So right here, I'm just dicing some yellow spot. I'm gonna right. fry this up and put it inside of some of the sushi rolls. I'm just gonna crack this egg here, break it up just a little bit, break the yolk up. Add the fish. The egg is gonna make this fish really nice and sticky so that the panko glues onto it. If you guys saw my last episode, the manini and the kole tang, I totally forgot an egg and my panko didn't stick at all. Maybe just a little bit more actually. Going in for the first cut. There really is a lot of marbling in this meat. It really surprises me. Yeah. I'm just trying to sear the top of the fish here just so that the fat caramelizes. <laughs> this Rainbow Runner almost looks like Wagyu steak. Does it add anything? Having that on top or no? It's, just kind of it's super smooth. There's no fishy taste at all. Sweet. It's uh, no, it's amazing. It's almost like having a piece of nigiri on a roll. Thanks for watching another episode of Awesome Blue. And if you guys want to see another episode, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons, and we'll see you on the next one.